Man. Oh, that was offensive coordinator Jeff Levin speaking with the media, but now we have Hickory up to the podium. Here's the head football coach. All right. Good morning. Uh, got a really good, strong SMU team coming in here uh, this weekend. Uh, really looking forward to a, a challenge that they they uh, bring to the table. They've got it's a veteran football team. They've got give or take 14, 15 seniors starting on uh, defense and offense. So very experienced football team. They've done a great job. Uh, in just a short amount of time, uh, know Rhett Lashley really well, and everywhere he's been, he's had great success. Uh, obviously, on the offensive side of the ball, as a coordinator, and he's done a great job here in a short amount of time with uh, SMU. They've recruited well, have uh, really attacked the portal, have um, uh, excellent skill guys uh, on offense that they've uh, been able to develop, and and again have. Uh, uh, recruited in the transfer portal, L.J. Johnson, um, Texas A&M running back, and uh, uh, Jalen Knighton from uh, from Miami are, are two guys in particular uh, in the backfield that are really explosive players, highly recruited guys, uh, done a great job. They've got a you know, really good depth at receiver and uh, big long tight ends. Quarterback Preston Stone, or somebody have a little bit of familiarity, uh, had recruited him when uh, when I was at Clemson. Really um, excellent player, can run and uh, throws with great accuracy. Uh, really good, strong poise. Defense played really well for them a week ago. Uh, really got after uh, their front seven. Really got after Louisiana Tech. Had six sacks and uh, doing a lot of really good things. They're coming in here with a lot of confidence. Um, uh, kind of like us coming off of our game and you know great confidence from a lot of hard work that our guys have put in and, uh, and again this is going to be a great challenge five o'clock stripe the stadium game uh, for our fans uh, be a, a great opportunity for us to see a different style of offense and again a, a really aggressive defense as we develop our team for for the season so uh, i'll open it up for questions Just what do you remember about his recruiting process uh, the first signing period? And then also just the way he played on Saturday. And was he just like a sponge that year one, just absorbing everything and really taking what he learned in year one into a sophomore season? Yeah, a gentry, they were really pretty easy to recruit. He, he didn't make his decision uh, right away. He did uh, take uh, quite a bit of time uh, to uh, figure everything out. And uh, But an awesome family, great people. And I don't think he was playing any kind of games. He's a very focused and driven and a committed guy. Um, in regards to a year ago, you know, it's like a lot of freshmen. He did not come in uh, at semester, so he ran track. And uh, so learning the new verbiage and things of that nature, uh, you know, there's always a transition period. But he worked really hard. Uh, he's, you know, everything I've been bragging about him, you know, he's – uh, fearless and he's committed really hard working he just he had uh, some bumps and bruises through you know a good portion of camp and uh, you know hopefully he can maintain uh, good health for the season he's got a tremendous future uh, nowhere close to where you know we feel like he's going to be he has tremendous ceiling uh, played everywhere in high school uh, so uh, wasn't like he came out of uh, his mama's womb as a as a corner. You know, he's a great athlete that, again, they used him everywhere at Booker T, uh, which is a credit to him and his instincts. But what I loved about him out of high school, he was, as a, uh, as a skinnier athlete, you know, he really tackled aggressively. Uh, they played him as some linebacker at, in some games, and, uh, and he played with a go-for-broke attitude there. So he's had the same mindset when he's been healthy here, uh, and he is a sponge, really smart, takes great pride in, in his work. Let's go to Ryan Aver. Yeah, Brent, we're the channel minor. Al Ashback here. When asked about your, what's your injury situation uh, this week, specifically Drake, uh, DeSan, and, and Davis. Yeah, don't know anything um, different um, uh, today. Don't have any idea uh, whether or not those guys will be available. Uh, Desan, 
uh, we worried initially it might be a, a high sprain component. It doesn't look like that's the case at all. And, uh, and it, Drake was ready to go back in the game uh, on Saturday. Did you say Davis? Davis yeah. Um, yeah, he might be uh, another week or so. He's, it's really uh, the issue for him is uh, ankle sprain, uh, probably a high component there. Um, Jaden Gibson had a couple of really competitive uh, catches on Saturday. He talked about how much of a difficult year it was last year for him, true freshman coming in, highly regarded. What did you see him do that set him up to be able to have, you know, some moments like he did on Saturday? I'm sure moments you want him to continue to have in games. Just maturing, you know, his perspective changed. Uh, a lot of nurturing uh, by a lot of people and. Uh, you know, he needed, he'd be the first one to tell you he had to grow up, you know, just how you show up every day consistently and, you know, compete and be a great teammate and take coaching and uh, put your nose in a playbook and, uh, you know, get out of your own way. Uh, and uh, I'm really proud of the progress that he's made and, again, the, the the maturity that you're seeing every day from him. Uh, having some su success is good for everybody. Uh, you know, from an affirmation standpoint, doing, you know, what we ask him to do. And, uh, but he's really uh, um, had a great transformation, you know, in the last six months. Let's go to George. Yeah, Brent, kind of a off the field question for you. Uh, there's been a lot made about game day atmosphere and I know you guys moved the walk of champions down Lindsay Street I'm just wondering what are your impressions of the game day atmosphere on Saturday and how much does that actually play into whether it's recruiting or, or just the game in general well I, having a good game day atmosphere makes a big impression you know uh, m most young men want to they want to play in a in a uh, an intense passionate environment and they're paying attention to everything so uh, once we got into the stadium, it was fantastic. There's a, a good group of people uh, that are always excited and eager to, to welcome us. And uh, But it, everything does matter. Those recruits travel around the country. We're not recruiting against, you know, a, a Mid-America uh, Mid conference. You know, we're recruiting against the best of the best. And so, uh, uh, th you know, that's always a perspective that a recruit's going to bring to the table. Secondly, just following up. Stuff you mentioned, R. Mason Thomas and Gavin Sawchuk after the game. Is it still? Yeah, they're available. They're available. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay, right, SMU's offensive line pretty experienced at a couple of spots. What kind of different challenges are they going to provide for you this week, specifically with the pass rush going up against Say, the I'm sorry. SMU offensive line? Yeah, and what about them? Their veteran group. What kind yeah. of different challenges that going to provide for the pass well, rush? Well, again, they've seen a lot. You know, uh, we're not trying to trick anybody. Uh, you know, but they're going to have a tough mind mindset to them and uh, they're going to be excited to come compete and you know uh, we're not going to sneak up on anybody so uh, it'll be a group of guys that again have played a lot of ball seen a lot of stuff and and uh, they want to make a name for themselves so i expect their best but i expect our guys best as well okay, mm -hmm. time, James Hale. we ran into the game a couple of times they got loose and the defensive guys rallied made the tackle and then stoned them and then you know, they missed field goals Talk about your pursuit in this game defensively and what did you think about it? Is it what you thought it should be? Yeah, I mean, we get, get cover to the ball, you know, cover to the whistle. Uh, thought it was, you know, thought it was good. Uh, you know, I thought uh, the one time we had a uh, we had a bust and Billy uh, ran a guy down, I thought that was a, you know, a great effort play on his uh, behalf. But I uh, thought our pursuit was good, you know, turning and chasing, running the ball. Uh, we had very, very few loafs, and you always want more, you always want better. And uh, it shouldn't uh, matter who you're playing, it's how you play uh, that matters. And uh, you want to have great habits. So um, when there's opportunity, which there were, there were uh, an opportunity to teach and coach and uh, reinforce uh, demand uh, even better, you know, we certainly will uh, take advantage of those opportunities. 
Brent, we got to see the competitive depth. You guys had 87 guys play on, on Saturday, but these next few weeks, you know, game re uh, practice reps are limited, game reps become limited. How do you begin to kind of cull that competitive depth to where you need it to become, you know, big 12 play? Yeah, I mean, guys that, you know, we feel are, are uh, guys that can give us quality reps are in our, our three deep, and, you know, they're repping, you know, during the course of the week like normal. Last week we didn't have more opportunity to rep more guys during the week. It's the same amount of guys. You know, there's several guys that played in the game that didn't take one snap of scout work uh, as far as being able to see what the opponent's going to do. They just applied their rules and whatnot. So if that's a guy like Sammy and with Seagull, he, he's down with the offense all week, you know, giving him a scout team look. And then we threw him in the game. He did pretty good. And uh, But there were several guys like that, you know, that did actually play. And uh, But you're true two and a half deep, I would say, that are down there with you. Uh, you know, you're always, you know, conscious of, you know, how you rep guys during the week and getting them ready. I don't see that necessarily changing. Uh, is it going to be 87? I don't know. Uh, I, I think that developing your team and developing depth is an ongoing thing that we've got to all be very conscious of. And, uh, you know, regardless of what the next few weeks looks like, I think it's important that we continue to develop our team. Yeah, Brent, PJ saw some time in the second half. Was he healthy all throughout camp? And how pleased have you been with the way that he's developed since camp started? Yeah, he came into camp a little bit banged up, but um, so. Uh, but I've been really excited about where he is and where he's going, you know, what he brings to the table, and uh, my expectation he, he'll continue to uh, uh, enhance his role uh, as the season goes on. Hey Brent, the defense played 51 snaps on Saturday. The offense played 90. Maybe just how important was that in terms of establishing that foundation of complementary football? And how important is that going into Saturday against an SMU team that plays really, really fast? Yeah, I mean, that's what's what you want. Uh, offense wants to stay on the field. Defense wants to get off the field. And, uh, I mean, it's always important. And, all the stats are going to align with the things that you desire when that's the case. So, you know, the challenge is going to be uh, greater this week uh, for obvious reasons. And, uh, you know, you're, you're looking at a team that's probably got more depth and they certainly got more experience. Arkansas State was a very young team. This is a team that, as I said, I think it's maybe 15 seniors. Uh, starting between the offense and the defense. That's a bunch of seniors. And, uh, uh, you know, senior teams play with maturity. Uh, usually they play with um, a different level of confidence. You know, their fundamentals are usually better. The moments aren't too big. So, um, but we've got a, a good group of seniors as well. And um, my expectation is we continue to uh, push and strive and hopefully execute to where we're continue to complement one another. You know, for us to have the kind of season uh, that we desire, that's it's going to take that. Coach, uh, cheetah position is uh, really important for you and your defense. It looks like that might be a really strong position, uh, assuming Desan is back. Uh, how did Justin play because he got most of the snaps? Uh, how had those guys grade out? Yeah, they graded good. Uh, winning grades. And... Uh, Again, there's a gazillion things you want those guys, all of the guys, to to be better at, you know, whether it's eyes or alignments or fundamentals or man technique or zone technique, uh, you know, the process pre-snap. There's a lot. But uh, it's a good start, and, you know, I expect a stronger finish. Mike, just a quick follow-up. Uh, Peyton looked like a couple of strong tackles. Is he a guy that might – uh, be involved more in the cheetah position. How does that work? Yeah, no, he can play uh, lots of spots, and he's he's repped that plenty. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he's repped it plenty. Brent, regarding your portal philosophy, is that something that did, did it take a little bit of trial and error to, to come to a final decision on how you'd recruit it, how you use it? That does it change based on 
and yeah, make them it the changes roster. based on your yeah your needs and maybe what you thought at the beginning of the year by the end of the year uh, things reveal themselves and maybe you're somewhere else but you have a, an inkling with guys graduating where young people are uh, you know what an immediate need where you can bring a guy in that you feel like can make a difference and uh, you know you know you have to have if you it, what the portal allows you to do it it you can enhance a position when you have sudden departures whether that's through the uh, that, that leave on their own or that maybe um, you've got a bunch of guys at one position graduating or that declare early for the draft uh, it allows you to um, where you feel like it, you might, you don't have as many questions answered. Maybe you can bring in a guy that, that is more of a safety valve, uh, if you will. But the biggest, I think the biggest impact is, you know, what we know is where somebody can come at a position of need and make it better immediately. So it all depends on where your roster is and what type of guys that you're able to recruit out of high school. And, um, you know, where we have been the, the first couple of years is, to me, my vision is it'll be, um, uh, not as much, you know, but it's still going to be. I'm not naive. I know how with the fluidity of players being able to, to leave, you've got to maximize, uh, you know, when you feel like you need to, you know, the, the opportunity to recruit in the free agent market. Yeah, we'll go far right, second row, Justin. Right. John Quez uh, spoke yesterday about how he really prides himself in studying the playbook, studying the film and whatnot. From your perspective, what have you seen out of him in terms of his preparation that allowed him to have a game like he did this past Saturday? Yeah, it's just he's mature, really intelligent. He's got a high football IQ. He's got a motor, loves to practice, loves to work, super coachable. Uh, he's a football player. He literally could come and play DB, you know, tomorrow for us. Uh, but... Lots to really like about him. He's incredibly talented, but he's got all the, all the other stuff, though, too. Uh, the intangibles, the humility, uh, again, uh, the intelligence, the toughness. Really tough guy. Thanks to Justin Mason. Brent, wanted to ask you about uh, Calvin Thibodeau coming back this week as SMU's defensive line coach. What's your relationship like with him? And did you consider keeping him on staff when you got here, or did you know pretty quickly that Coach Bates was going to be ready to come back? Yeah, I mean, obviously. Uh, and I was just upfront and honest. Uh, love Calvin and uh, appreciate everything he did uh, here as a Sooner. He's always a Sooner, great Sooner. Uh, I let him know uh, immediately that uh, I'm certainly would consider, but I've I've got a um, uh, you know I've offered the job you know to uh, to someone else, and I'm gonna give him an opportunity to take it uh, before I you know move forward. What is it about him that you really appreciated from when he played from you and also played for you and also just your interaction? Yeah, he's just always ready. He had a, you know, he valued his role. Uh, he was always ready, a great teammate, practiced hard, um, made plays within the system, smart guy. Uh, just, you know, joy to coach. Okay, let's go third row, Cliff. Yeah, Coach, you've had a little bit more of an opportunity to look at the run game uh, since Saturday. Uh, how do you feel about the offensive line and the backs? Our offensive line and backs, um, I loved. Again, they, they play with great passion and intensity. I felt we had, we had just as a football team in the offensive line, you know, if you could say they led the way. Uh, they had a sense of desperation to them, you know, great focused, uh, great focused intensity about them. And uh, they were precise and finished a lot, finished the plays as a unit, you know, uh, for four quarters, uh, was pleased with uh, what we saw, even through air and all that. You know, just the effort and the physicality, uh, and again the you know maturity, the sense of desperation was there. That's how you got to play the game. The, the game will honor you when you have that kind of a mindset and that kind of an attitude. Okay, uh, very back, far right, Randall. You kind of talked about some of the skill position players that SMU has in week one. They hit a few, you know really big uh, deep touchdowns. What does your defense has to, neutral, has to do to neutralize some of those plays? Yeah, you got to play with good fundamentals. you got to understand the calls. you got to understand splits. you got to understand uh, situation. Uh, and then you got to apply, you know, the knowledge. You know, wisdom is the application of knowledge. So we give them the knowledge during the week. And, and then in all those situations, when they're out there on the field on their own, they need to apply it. And... 
uh, you know so uh, nothing more than that you know of course again I, there's nothing easy about what I just said uh, you know so there's got to be a great process pre-snap and then uh, you know post-snap they've got to do a great job at finishing plays the ball's going to be in the air they're going to pull up on their bus and they're going to launch that football down the field and and our guys have got to do a great job of you know straining you know on the finish of of routes stay in the way back parker yeah coach for a guy like uh kate mcintyre who came in not having played a whole lot of tight end to play as many snaps as he did in week one and have a nice catch and run how'd you feel about the way he performed great you know again another summer enrollee uh, he's a good football player. Good football players, they transition quick. Uh, it's not to say that uh, he, he's ready to be first team all Big 12, but just the football doesn't overwhelm them. And, uh, you know, once they understand the language and how it applies to them, you know, they, they transition pretty quick. But he's a, a great athlete. Again, a guy that we sincerely told him he can choose. What You want to play linebacker, you want to play – uh, tight end and he felt like he could transition maybe a little more quickly to tight end even though he didn't have a great depth of experience uh, and but he's again a tough guy hard working dude loves the weight room uh, is in great condition super smart uh, really coachable uh, he's got a great future yeah about Dylan um, every year he's played college football Prior to this one, his numbers have been remarkably similar. But Saturday, he was maybe more accurate than I've ever seen. It, did he come back different, better, or did he just have a lot of time you know, Saturday? I think it's probably a little combination of the both, but I, I would say the latter uh, or the uh, the former first. Just uh, I think that you know you're seeing the best version of him. He's, the game is uh, he's been a highly productive player. Um, he'd probably be the first to tell you that uh, another off season, another you know off season of film study and uh, and the work that he's put in, uh, how he watches video and looks at an opponent and you know the pre and the post snap you know diagnosis has probably slowed down you know incredibly uh, strong form. So uh, I would say it's all those things. And, uh, and then again, I think it's the group of players around him uh, or another, it's not all of them, but he's got a great group that uh, are another year in the system. So they're better at what they're doing too. So everybody's on that proverbial same page. His personality, what have you seen him bring to this team as he's come in? Uh, obviously just a one-year guy. What have you seen him bring personality? This is a servant attitude um, for a guy that's as experienced as, uh, as he is. He, he doesn't he, – he didn't show up here uh, with a know-it-all attitude. Uh, he wanted to come here and be challenged. Um, so his maturity beyond his years, even for a, uh, whatever he is, is a fourth-year guy, a fifth-year guy, um, fourth-year guy. I don't know if he's fourth or fifth year. Yeah. I think he played in fifth year. But uh, but he came here for all the right reasons, you know, said, okay, I'm not where I want to be. Oklahoma's going to get me a different type of challenge, different uh, level of play maybe, but – as much as anything, the challenge and development, you know, both from uh, Coach Beatenbow and Jerry Schmidt. But what a what a fun teammate, you know. What y'all experience, that's who everybody experiences. And you know, as opposed to the guy that's played a lot and he comes in here and you know he in love with himself. You know, Walter's not like that. He's confident, but he's incredibly humble. And and then he's he's about the work. He loves to work. And players, that's how he immediately earned respect of his teammates. You know, uh, you know, he's willing to listen. You know, you get two years and one mouth, and you know, uh, he he understands what that is all about. And uh, uh, he's really worked on his craft, and and again, developing relationships. He's a relational guy, and and uh, so he's fit right in. He's a he's a pig in the mud. Yeah, Brent, you spent 10 years in the ACC. Mm -hmm. You're about to play a team 
a program that's going to the ACC. Mm -hmm. Does that freak you out when you start thinking about everywhere everybody's at and where everybody's going? And you no. just like Gundy yesterday gave us a shtick about he couldn't remember who he's playing this year. <laughs> so does it? Do you ever get off rails? Or are you able to just tunnel in and we're playing SMU and I don't know where I don't care where they're going or where I mean, they're coming from. I mean, I pay. I love college football. I know I've said that before. I love college football. I love stories. I love people. I love uh, coaches. I love history. Um, I don't. I just think that's part of you know where things are going. We know where it's headed, and so that's just part of it. So I don't really have. I th you know I said well, they'll do just fine in the ACC, uh, SMU's. You know they got a lot of positive things that will. Uh, enable them to transition uh, pretty smoothly, and then again in the big picture, uh, be able to you know compete at a really high level. You know, from a location standpoint and uh, commitment to facilities. Uh, but other than that, you know, I look at the DNA of an opponent. It's kind of nameless and faceless. Other than that, and uh, but I do pay attention. I don't have my head in the sand. Uh, and I can't say that, oh, that stuff doesn't matter. Uh, when it comes to getting ready for a game, it doesn't matter. But when it comes to, you know, my love and appreciation for, you know, what this sport has meant to so many people, including myself, uh, it does matter. But, you know, I don't have any kind of strong feelings one way or the other. Okay, last two, James Hellman and Garen. The way that the SMU plays, the pa your pass rush is going to be a key. What did you think about your pass rush? And what do you think about it coming into this game? Yeah, I think it'll be tested in a different way. Again, this uh, again we saw 50 plays, uh, so we didn't uh, when we saw you know a handful of you know third and medium or short, and so you know the ball's coming out quick or they're running the football. Uh, they ran on one of the third and longs. Uh, Arkansas State did, and then uh, and then another third and long. Uh, we had a bust, and. Uh, so really didn't give him a chance there. The quarterback literally caught it and threw it, you know, in about 1.5 seconds. And then I think he saw, you know, most the other day, you know, very little drop back. It's three step and uh, seven and eight man protections and then the RPO. So it's hard. You know, I just look at disruptiveness and consistency being where we're supposed to be playing with good pad level, striking people, uh, knocking people backwards. And it's pretty good, you know, a uh, good start. Nothing to beat our chest about, and you know, again, I didn't expect him to come out and look like the, you know, uh, you know, the '85 Bears day one either, you know. Uh, but I, I didn't leave the field or after watching the film, you know, uh, in disgust either. You know, feel pretty good, and uh, know that we got to get better. Portal follow up, Brett. Sorry about that. Um, are you surprised at all the impact it's had on the games? already <laughs> no I mean I look no I'm not again uh, I don't know if it's been the portal or not maybe it is maybe there's there's all kinds of great stories out there yeah I mean, you think about it if it's going to create parody I don't think that's a bad thing you know I don't think it's a bad thing the only part that I don't love is is that we're again we give young people no reason to pause and as we know we are all we've all been an emotional and uh, out of whack you know 18 19 20 year old and impulsive by nature uh, young people uh, are and uh, we you know I would love to incentivize you know all of it but it sounds self-serving and look it's benefited us I'm just saying just I'm coming at it from a, a dad and and uh, somebody that you know believes wholeheartedly in uh, in loyalty and in building something and uh, sticking through some tough moments. And that's not a bad thing to uh, to stick around and, and figure things out. And uh, there's always exceptions, but uh, I don't know. I kind of like it. You know, I won't like it when uh, it, it hurts the Oklahoma Sooners. Uh, you can't uh, you can't blame me, uh, but I don't know. It's exciting, you know. Who, who doesn't like March Madness, right? Everybody loves March March Madness for all the obvious reasons. But you know, that's just I'm, it. Really doesn't matter how I feel uh, at the end of the day because I'm not changing it. 
and nobody that makes decisions have asked me, hey, what do you think, Coach Venables? So uh, I just I just believe in being attached to something, you know, like for the rest of your life, intimately attaching yourself to a group of people, to a place that you can call home. I, I believe in that from a collegiate uh, experience and um, so I think you're giving that up, I mean, you don't know what you don't know as a, you know, 18, 19, 20 year old, just, I'm coming to you, uh, from a 52 year old perspective that's lived a little bit of life and, uh, and what I can appreciate about being an alumni, uh, you know, uh, of somewhere and, or again, just being maybe even from a career standpoint, you know, I haven't worn many hats and, uh, I feel I feel very connected to people and places at the couple of places that I've been. Um, that it comes from a you know from a place of genuineness and and uh, being loyal to where your feet are. Thanks. Yep. Thank you, Coach. All right. Thanks. Appreciate everybody. Y'all have a great week. Thank you.